Uh, tonight, we're privileged to have Ian Sanderson speak to us. He was born and raised on the island of Oahu. He has a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Hawaii in civil engineering with a concentration in hydraulic design and fluid mechanics. He also has a Juris Doctor degree from the William S. Richardson School of Law. Currently, he's a partner at the Watanabe Ng Law Firm in Honolulu, where he concentrates his practice in environmental law. Ian was brought to the orchid world by his wife, Kate Leonard. Together, they maintain a hobbyist collection of a couple of thousand orchids at their Pacific Heights home. Since their children have become adults, they have increased their involvement with orchids. Both are probationary judges with the Honolulu Orchid Society. And Ian is a student judge, hopefully soon to be an associate judge with the American Orchid Society. They are also members of several orchid societies and clubs. So without further ado, here's Ian Sanderson. Thank you. Uh, Brad, will you allow me to share my screen? Oh, yes, yes. Hold on. Here you are. Okay. All right. You should be able to. Alrighty. Good evening. Thank you. My topic this evening is Latoria dendrobiums with the Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga as a focal point. I chose this particular cross, cross for a couple of reasons. First, Roy Tokunaga is Hawaii's most renowned hybridizer of Latoria Dendrobiums. And second, he named this cross after himself, so it must be deserving of some special attention. In addition, Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga has earned dozens of awards for both flower quality and culture and has been made into very many nice crosses. Most of you probably have Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga or some other h and nurseries, some of other h and nurseries fine Latoria Dendrobiums in your own backyard collection. To put things in context, Dendrobium is the second largest orchid genus after Bobophyllum with over a thousand recognized species, which have been divided into some 40 sections, one of which is Latoria. Dendrobiums occur from India and Sri Lanka in the West, to Tahiti in the East, from Japan and Korea in the North, to New Zealand in the South. They grow in habitats ranging from semi-desert to rainforest from hot, steamy lowlands to cool mountain ranges, often as epiphytes or lithophytes with a few terrestrials. Dendrobiums differ widely in their vegetative characteristics, but have flower features that unite the genus. The dendrobium has a chin-like structure called the mentum that is formed by a fusion of the foot of the column with the lateral sepals and the base of the lip is fused to the base of the column. The section Latoria contains about 50 or so species, most of which come from Papua New Guinea. Generally speaking, the species that are found in the background of the most popular and highly awarded Latoria dendrobiums all come from New Guinea. Latoria dendrobiums have mainly club-shaped pseudobulbs with leaves near the top. Although the inflorescences may appear to be terminal, they actually arise laterally in association with a leaf axis, and the plants often carry multiple inflorescences near the apex of the canes, creating a big bouquet of flowers. Latoria dendrobiums tend to have fewer flowers per inflorescence and also rather fleshy flowers. The lips are generally three-lobed with a distinctly raised callus. Plants in the Latoria section are extremely vigorous and produce long-lasting flowers. Latoria dendrobiums 
have a somewhat drooping orientation, but the fantastic shapes and distinctive colors and spotting have attracted hobbyists and orchid judges alike. <clears throat> Sexton Luturia dendrobiums come in a wide, wide variety of shapes and sizes, as exemplified here by the, hybrid, by the primary hybrid dendrobium green elf, and just a couple of the species, dendrobium johnsonii and dendrobium ultraviolacea. With that context, let's, let's talk about some of the world's finest Latoria dendrobium, starting with dendrobium roy tokenaga. Dendrobium roy tokenaga appears to be the most highly awarded Latoria dendrobium to date. It has received awards all around the world, including from the Honolulu Orchid Society and the American Orchid Society. Dendrobium roy tokenaga white out won a high scoring culture award from the American Orchid Society at the Windward Orchid Society show in 2013 with 1,068 flowers and 53 buds on 88 inflorescences and it was exhibited by H&R Nursery. A couple of years later, another H&R grown cultivar was awarded at a show in California with 613 flowers and 10 buds on 60 inflorescences. In 2000, Wilbur Chang was given a culture award by the Honolulu Orchid Society for Dendrobium Roy Tokenaga Elizabeth. This plant was displayed with 510 flowers and 51 buds on 51 inflorescences. Note that the petals and sepals were pure white. As H&R's breeding program progressed, we see more and more color in the petals and sepals. Between 2001 and 2007, Honolulu Orchid Society awarded other culture awards to H&R, George and Judy Hidano, and another to Wilbur Chang, all of these with predominantly white flowers, some with maroon stripes on the lip. Dendrobium roy tokenaga is a cross between two section Latoria species, Dendrobium atroviolaceum and Dendrobium johnsonii. Atroviolaceum has distinctive colors, nodding flowers, and a short, strongly recurved lip. It has an extended flowering period of up to six months and is a vigorous grower. The plant can carry multiple inflorescences near the apex of the cane, creating a pleasing aura or bouquet of flowers, a trait that was passed on to Gendorbium roy tokenaga. Each growth of Aphroviolaceum can produce two new growths, thus doubling the plant size with every growth cycle. Pseudobulbs can continue to produce flower spikes year after year, even after the leaves have fallen, right up until the pseudobulb dies. Dendrobium johnsonii has clean, white, showy petals, which are fuller than most of the species in section Latoria. The sepals are also white and devoid of warts on the back. The lip is white to green with magenta to purple blotches on both side lobes. The flowers last for about two months. Dendrobium johnsonii has been used in dozens of regist registered crosses, the most highly awarded of which is Dendrobium roy tokenaga. Here are a couple of Dendrobium roy tokenagas that have been recognized by the American Orchid Society. Majestic had large flowers has, excuse me, larger flowers than most other awarded Roy Tokenagas. Bright white color in the wide flat, with the wide flat petals and striking striping and spotting on the lip are really nice. On the right, we have Dendrobium Roy Tokenaga burgundy chips exhibited by H&R in 2017. The distinct and striking coloration on the back of the petals is eye-catching. In a very different way than majestic, the lip coloration is striking with the bold, huge stripes and the bright white purple lobe.
HOS awarded this large flowered colorful Roy Tokunaga in 2018. What is truly remarkable here is the fuchsia blush on the front of the petals, as neither of the parent species have color on the front of their petals. You also can get a sense of the prominent dark burgundy spots on the back of the sepals and petals. Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga Ruth was recognized by the American Orchid Society for distinctive characteristics. It was one of the first plants shown to the American Orchid Society with bright pink color on the front of the petals. Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga Yellow Lip was shown at the 2016th Windward Orchid Show where it received a cultural award for its exemplar display of 260 flowers and 31 buds on 52 inflorescences, but it was not judged for flower quality. Roy describes the yellow-lipped flowers as all coming out kind of a cream color, which he felt was muddy looking and unattractive, so he did not pursue this line of breeding further. The official names of orchids, even of well-known species, can be very confusing, and here is an example. First, the official word. Q, the organization that maintains a world checklist of recognized species, does not recognize Norman Bientz as a separate species. The flowers shown here were awarded as Dendrobium Norman Bientz in January 2018, but are currently recognized by the American Orchid Society as Dendrobium atrovialaceum. One expert, Phil Cribb, describes atrovialaceum as having pseudobulbs alone ranging up to 31 centimeters in height, much, much bigger than this Norman Vianz. In 2010, another highly respected orchid expert, Phil Spence, described Dendrobium Norman Bientz as a separate species. Spence described the new species as differing from Atrovialacin in several respects. The stems are shorter on average and acutely angular in transverse section. The flowers are erect or semi-erect and of a different color with variation in the petal, shape, and lip when pressed, as well as other described lip structure differences. Most notably, mature plants of Norman Bionce were described as barely medium-sized for the Sectum Laturia. Spence also reported that Dendrobium Norman Bionce was collected in a distinct location on Mountain Solomani, Norman B. Island, part of Papua New Guinea, but not where after violations have reportedly been collected. There's not too much backyard growers can do about this confusing situation, but if your otherwise healthy plant seems small, it might be a naming problem and not a culture problem. In 2011, H&R Nurseries originated and registered Dendrobium Little Afro, which is a cross between Norman Bientz and Atrovialacium. Dendrobium Little Atro Nora's Charm was exhibited at the Windward Orchid Show in 2013. The plant was described as 94 centimeters wide and 73 centimeters tall, with flowers well distributed around the plant and cascading below the pot. The flowers measured a diminutive five centimeters horizontal natural spread but this plant aptly demonstrates the horticultural potential of section Latoria dendrobiums. Dendrobium little atrogena, shown by Miley's Hawaiian orchids at the Cunea Show in 2014, won a cultural award from the Honolulu Orchid Society with 777 flowers on 111 inflorescences. Also in 2011, 
H&R originated and registered Dendrobium microchip as a cross between Dendrobium norvimbiens and another miniature section Latorius species, Dendrobium apparens. Microchip has been awarded eight times by the American Orchid Society, six culture awards, and two flower quality awards. It has received other awards abroad, but no awards have ever been given by the Honolulu Orchid Society. On the left, Dendrobium microchip Lydia Clement was exhibited in Atlanta in 2018 with 290 flowers and 26 buds on 49 inflorescences. The flowers were described as continuously display, displayed around the entire plant. The horizontal natural spread was a tiny 3.2 centimeters. On the right, Dendrobium microchip Nora was shown by H&R at the 2013 Windward Orchid Society show with 280 flowers and 25 buds on 46 inflorescences with a horizontal natural spread of three centimeters. The color was described as creamy white with maroon spots on the back with a clear light chartreuse lip. It appears to have less of the striking color contrast than we have seen in some of the other examples with Atrovialacean and Norman Dias. Dendrobium microchip is another smaller ground Latoria cross that fits nicely in almost everybody's collection. Here are a couple of Dendrobium microchips that the AOS judges like. Percy's orchids is a bit bigger than the typical microchip with a horizontal natural spread of 4.8 centimeters. Roy Tokunaga commented that this particular plant strongly favors Norman Bianz. Both of these cultivars exhibit the twisting petals and bent dorsal sepals that were smoothed out in Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga by the addition of Johnsonium. The color and shape of the lip on the left is not terribly appealing, but the one on the right has an attractive contrasting color pattern, albeit with a curled frontal lobe. Oops. The other parent in microchip is the spectacularly tiny Dendrobium aberrans. It was named for its striking lip that has four extensions, with the two outer ones being wild, wider than the middle ones. Small seedlings, some less than an inch in height, have been reported to flower. The semi-pendulous inflorescence holds five to seven flowers. On the left, Dendrobium aberrant spring water shows off its distinctive petal shape. On the right, Dendrobium aberrant's Otrivai's angel demonstrates the upright stance of the flower and semi-pendulous inflorescence. The other half of Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga Dendrobium johnsonii has also parented several interesting and award-winning crosses. In 2005, H&R registered Dendrobium mini snowflake, a cross between Dendrobium aberrans and Dendrobium johnsonii. A testament to the popularity of H&R nursery, the pleasing form, cultural, and florifer floriferousness of the flowers. This cross won American Orchid Society awards all around the country, from Florida and Puerto Rico, Tennessee, Virginia, and the South, to the mid-Atlantic region and up to Illinois, Wisconsin, and Toronto in the North, and Montana and British Columbia in the West. Dendrobium mini snowflake Pinky's Choice was the first flower quality awarded plant given to this cross in Key West, Florida in 2008. Dendrobium mini snowflake Morite was twice awarded for its amazing display of flowers. This photo was taken in 2018 with approximately 1,300 flowers and 33 buds on 130 inflorescences. Curiously, 
no flower quality or culture awards have been in, given in Hawaii, either by the American Orchid Society or the Honolulu Orchid Society. So if you have one of these in your backyard, bring it out for judging. H&R took John Sony Eye in another direction, crossing it onto another section Latoria species, Dendrobium convolutum, that produced Dendrobium green mist. Roy also crossed John Sony Eye back onto Roy Tokunaga, naming it Bill Takamatsu. This lovely specimen on the right was exhibited by Dave Beeler at the Windward Show in 2008. While it is hard to see in this award photo, the lip side lobes were slightly striped with amethyst. Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga produced other excellent crosses, notably including Dendrobium Hawaii stripes. Akinar crossed Dendrobium Nida which is not a Latoria dendrobium onto dendrobium roy tokenaga. The result were these brilliant flat candy striped flowers. The cross arguably blends the best of the Latoria section with the Phalanthe section of dendrobiums and exhibits the characteristics of both. On the right is a very nice example of dendrobium royal wings, which is dendrobium roy tokenaga Cross with dendrobium silver rings, wings, itself a primary hybrid within the section Latoria, Johnsonii across the eczema. Although this picture is an award photo from the Queensland Australia Orchid Society, it exemplifies the fine size, form, and color achieved through this HR hybridizing program. There are many other fine Latoria species and hybrids, but I close my presentation with a glimpse at the granddaddy of the section Latoria. Dendrobium spectabile was the first Latoria dendrobium to be described, and it remains a force to be reckoned with in the Latoria section of genus Dendrobium. One would be hard pressed to describe that as photogenic. It has been described as baby serpents fighting over meat at feeding time, it's an orchid description. It is widely grown and thrives in a variety of conditions. H&R awarded a CCM to a spectabile shown by Canon Eileen Ching at the Cunea Orchid Show in 2010. Bill Spence reports that, it's, that this interesting species has been used in many crosses, both within the Latoria section and with dendrobiums in other sections, with the majority ending in disaster. Personally, I rather like some of the spectabile crosses. In particular, I like Richella orchids, Dendrobium violet jimaji. Dendrobium violet jimaji is a cross between Dendrobium midnight and spectabile. This is a hardy plant that seems to always be in bloom. The picture on the right is Walter Yamada's well-grown specimen with 277 flowers and 63 buds on 39 inflorescences that were shown at the Windward Orchid Society show in 2019. This clone has an interesting history. In 1997, it was awarded an AM and a CCM by the Honolulu Orchid Society when it was presented by George and Judy Hidano at the IAEA Orchid Club meeting. Four years later, the same cultivar was awarded another CCM by the Honolulu Orchid Society when it was shown by Walter Yamada at the Cunea Orchid Show with 132 flowers. Walter did an amazing job with this plant. It, it had more than doubled the number of flowers in 2019 when he had displayed it at the Moonward Orchid Show. With that, I conclude my slides and Mel will take over and show a brief video of a few of the Latoria dendrobiums that Kate and I have growing around our yard. I see, and if you can unshare your screen. Uh, I will in a moment. 
Now that we have seen some excellent awarded Latoria dendrobiums, let's take a look at some of the same species and hybrids that are grown in our yard. We have many different microclimates here at our house. The Malka side of the house where I'm standing now is generally much shadier and cooler than the Mackay side. Some of our orchids grow under cover and many do not. Some are hanging with open roots in net pots and others are in their original plastic pots. All of our orchids get uh, watered with reverse osmosis water, but that watering can sometimes be infrequent. Fertilizing and pest reduction are not as regular as maybe they should be. Somehow the Latoria dendrobium survive and in some cases even do quite well. Now let's take a look at some of the species that Kate and I have in our collection. To start with, here's an example of Dendrobium johnsonii. You can see the full white petals. These petals are about nine centimeters wide. That's their natural spread. A couple of other characteristics to note about these flowers are they're slightly upward facing and have wide flat lips. This particular plant has lived the vast majority of its life at H&R Nursery. Roy Tokenaga has tightly wrapped the old roots with wire to allow good airflow and drainage while still providing the compact feel that dendrobium roots like so much. Another thing to note is the location of the two inflorescences. The older spike is from the leafless back pseudobulb. In contrast, the newer spike is from the most recent growth. Both spikes originate from the apex of the canes. Overall, this plant is about 50 centimeters or 20 inches tall, and the pseudobulbs are slightly spindle-shaped. Next, we have an example of Dendrobium atrovialaceum. The petals and sepals on these flowers are creamy white and spotted on the back. On this plant, the petals are much more spotted than the, than the sepals. Both petals and sepals have a slight mauve flushing at the base. The lips are also creamy white with dark purple stripes and slight green coloration at the tips. Importantly, the lips have a pronounced curved form. These are smaller flowers than the Dendrobium johnsonii that we just looked at and with a natural spread of approximately six centimeters. Also, in contrast to the Dendrobium johnsonii, you can see that these flowers nod forward a great deal. This plant is shorter than our Dendrobium johnsonii at approximately 40 centimeters or 16 inches in height. The canes are also slightly spindle shaped with a club-like cross-section. In Papua New Guinea, this species grows at higher elevations of 2,500 feet to 6,000 feet. This plant is another plant from H&R. Roy potted it in net pot, in a net pot with smaller net pots wedged around the root ball to provide a tight spot that fill, still affords plenty of ventilation and drainage. Our next species is Dendrobium normanbiens. These nodding flowers are similar to Atrovialaceum in coloration and shape, but much smaller in size and more forward facing. Here, the flowers have a natural spread of only four centimeters. In addition, this plant is only 16 centimeters or six inches in height, and the pseudobulbs have a very pronounced spindle shape. Some authorities consider this plant to be a variety of Dendrobium atrovialaceum. However, 
we believe it is a species. This plant is grown in a net pot with large bark chips around, that are around the root ball to wedge it. This plant, Dendrobium aberrans, is considered a miniature because of its small growth habit, only about 10 centimeters, and very small, about 1.5 centimeters natural spread on the flowers. The plant can be found in the background of many popular Lectoria dendrobiums. Now let's look at some of the primary hybrids of the Lectoria dendrobiums. The first is Dendrobium roy tokenaga. This is a Dendrobium johnsonii atroviolaceum cross, which was originally made by L. tempera and registered by Roy Tokunaga of H&R in 1997. We have three flowering examples in our yard, Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga semi-alba cross spots, which is downstairs, Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga spots cross Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga best spots, which is this plant, and Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga pink blush cross best pink. These are excellent plants and I really, really enjoy them. What you can see here is that they've adopted the wide, flat lip of the Dendrobium johnsonii and have the beautiful spots from the Dendrobium atroviolaceum. This is another Latoria hybrid. It's Dendrobium tarochip. This is an obviously an old and vigorous plant. It is one half Dendrobium atroviolaceum, one quarter Dendrobium aberrans, and one quarter Dendrobium norbenbiens. This is one of the older plants in our yard and always puts on quite a show. The final plant is, den is another complex hybrid, hybrid uh, Dendrobium violet yamaji puanani. This is an intersectional hybrid made up of one half Dendrobium spectaboli, one quarter Dendrobium atroviolaceum, one eighth Dendrobium superbens, and one-eighth Dendrobium macrophyllum. We have two of these plants, one of on the hot side of the house and the other on the cool side. Both are grown under cover and both seem to do pretty well. That may not be terribly surprising because this cross was originated just down the road from where we live by Rochella orchids in 1981. All told, we have about 30 Latoria Dendrobium species and hybrids growing in our yard. This is our reverse osmosis watering system. It's something that's been talked about uh, quite a bit lately in HOS. Uh, starting in 2018 or so, Kate and I got interested in reverse osmosis water. Kate wanted it because she hoped it would improve the quality of our orchids. And I was interested in it really primarily as an engineering project. The, the few RO systems that I was familiar with were constructed on flat land and our house was about, has about a 35 foot elevation difference between the lowest orchid and the highest orchid. Uh, and because we were gonna have to locate the system here and pump uphill, a transfer pump that others were using for, to water their orchids was just simply not gonna work for us. And also we have too many orchids. We have uh, about 2000 orchids, many of them Phragmopediums that need a lot of water on hot summer days and relatively little water during wet periods in the winter. So I asked my engineering school study partner, Don McDonald, we both specialized in uh, hydrodynamics, um, and our, our really skilled and good friend, Craig Koenagi, if they could come up with a design for an RO system that would meet two criteria. First, 60, PSI on-demand water anywhere in our yard, and two, reliably produce 200 gallons of RO water every day. Because we are, we're all engineers and share a fondness for heavy equipment, things quickly got out of hand, hence you can see what's behind us. We ended up with what you see, a five, 500 gallons of RO storage capacity, courtesy of Roy Andrade, a thousand gallon per day RO system, a seven gallon, and that's all it is, and it feeds the whole yard, seven ga gallon bladder pressure tank and a swimming pool pump. These, the other things that we did was to add a carbon filter to minimize the chlorine, and that's that big column over there, and then 
I also added a siphon system so that we can fertil add fertilizer in line so we're fertilizing while we water. And we try to fertilize weekly with low doses of Michigan State fertilizer and stem. This system takes tap water, which is the same water we drink and bathe in, and is currently about 411 parts per million total dissolved solids, and filters it down to between 9 and 13 parts per million total dissolved solids, depending on how well I'm operating the system. Has it made a difference in our orchids? I would have to say yes. Well, I'm first to admit that I did not do a double blind study, and I know people that grow very fine orchids using Honolulu Board of Water Supply tap water. There does appear to be a noticeable improvement in the quality of our plants. First, the mineral spotting on the leaves is completely gone. Second, root growth is uniformly strong on all plants. And third, for some plants, Leaf growth has noticeably improved since the system went online in September of 2019. Has flower size improved? I don't know, but it certainly has not gotten smaller. All of that said, Kate and I have fun with it, and I had a great time, I really did, building it with my old friends. Thank you for watching. Give a big hand to Ian. And to Mel, who did that video. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, Ian, for your presentation. Thank you, Mel, for helping with the video. If there's any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask Ian. Oh, Ian, this, this is this is Brandy. Um, you, you know, uh, do you know who sells those um, the Roy Tokunaga, uh, Tokunaga, um, uh, was it um, shoots, I forget which one was it, the microchip. Um, I don't. Uh, he has the ones yeah. that we have. Yeah. Um, we either acquired from H and R yeah. on. Um, Various orchid safaris, or Roy no. gave them away as it's no. not giveaways, or, or, or we bought them at, at shows. Um, no. So that I don't think oh. they're available. So, so you got them when you were small, then. Uh, like a, they've come at different times, but yeah, we've we've got them <laughs> over the years. Right. And Kate also worked; she didn't like, she worked at H and a long time ago. Yeah. But oh, that's oh. So nice out of them. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Ian. Ian, how often are the RO filters needing to be replaced? Well, I just replaced the um, reverse osmosis membranes uh, for the first time. In, so that was about two and a quarter years. The, there are a couple of sediment filters which get surprisingly dirty with uh, tap water and those get replaced um, every time the pressure differential between the beginning of the system and the end of the system shifts to about 15 psi that's probably three times a year maybe so it's uh and i try to monitor it weekly uh and check to see how it's performing uh, and it's generally, it's held pretty steady between about nine and 13 parts per million. And it's, it's spiked up to about 30 a month ago. So that's when I changed the um, membranes. Ian, I wrote in the comments that in the video, it was really nice to see the scale of how big, how different each of the different types of Laturia dendrobiums are. Thank you. It's hard to see them unless you, they're side by side. And that was something Mel did a really good job with was uh, illustrate that. And um, I'm very, very grateful to Mel.
Here's a question, Ian. Were there any Laturia dendrobiums you found that didn't grow for you? Um, you know, my wife pretty much makes things grow. <laughs> and so I don't, I don't think I've had any that are, that have, uh, uh, that have, that have died. Uh, they're, they're all continuing on. Some do better than others. And that's the individual variation within the plants. There's no question about it. The, uh, uh, but they, they all seem to be okay. But, and they like the, they seem to like the water. Ian, um, have you had any trouble, I mean, just generally with the dendrobium aberrans? Because I know um, back when I was visiting h &R a lot, Roy was saying that that was not a very easy plant to grow at uh, sea level. And I uh, agreed with him on that when I tried to grow it at my house. Uh, but I imagine you're growing it better. Well, those came from age, those are relatively recent acquisitions from Ethan R that Roy gave to me. And um, uh, they've so far done extremely well. And um, I hope they will, I could continue to do as well as Roy does. It did look really healthy. Well, thank you guys. I really want to thank the paddling crowd. Anybody that's, that's stuck around this long, I really, really appreciate it.